Karen, welcome to my channel. Thank you for joining me. I'm so pleased that you were able to come and have a chat with me about your experience. Do you want to firstly say hello to everyone and give us a bit of a background as to who you are, your experience in Scientology, because you were a pretty high ranking member. Hi, Alex. This interview is long overdue. I hope it'll be the first of successive interviews while we share back and forth. Um, hi, everybody. Hi. Well, uh, I'm just going to, I'm not going to bore people with, I was in the cult for 40 years. I trained to the highest level possible, which is class 12 case supervisor, not just class 12 auditor, the manager of the class 12s. I was married to Heba Gench, the international president. In my almost 20 years in the Sea Org, five and a half years were spent at Office of Special Affairs, not in the dirty tricks intelligence area, but merely a secretary, a low level, <laughs> low level. I had the grand title called presidential aide. And I was, he was assistant booking him on shows, on TV, that kind of thing. It was an administrative post, not part of the more deadly spy intelligence fair game part of OSA. And I am throw it in. Uh, I, Marty and Mike Rinda befriended me enormously and helped me so much so that I departed the cult and they cut off my son. That's the one thing they took a take away your children. You want to leave us? We'll teach you a lesson. So they cut off Alexander. He had walking pneumonia. The coroner told me a $20 antibiotic could have saved his life. But the cult made quite sure that I couldn't be a mom. He was gaslighted. He was completely, he grew up in the cult. Probably one of my deepest regrets this lifetime is having a child and raising a child in the cult. So I paid the price. Alexander died with no mom and no dad. He was orphaned. His Father was locked in this hell at in base called SP Hole for eight years. He was in SP Hole. And Alexander died at 27 years old. And boy, does that motivate me to speak out. As old as I am, I let the world know what is really going on in the cult of Scientology. That's it, Alex. That's my intro. I bet. And it's firstly such a heartbreaking story to hear how, you know, we hear a lot about Scientology and how it breaks apart families and forces disconnection and these sorts of things and destroys family lives. Um, and it's stories like this that really go to show the extent to which that keyword destroy really means when uh, it says in the fair game policy that you have to destroy an sp's life they yes. don't just mean tear the family apart and disconnect people if they can they will literally um not get in the way to prevent you know easily curable illnesses and things that could save someone's life and i just wanted to say firstly that i'm so sorry that happened to you and that's it must have been quite heartbreaking Alex, I've many a day shed my tears. I've, I've come out stronger. You know the old saying, that which doesn't kill you makes you stronger? In hospitals, they have this bacteria now <laughs> that is completely immune to any antibiotic. They call them superbugs. And these bugs have learned to... <laughs> you cannot destroy them. They're going to destroy the, ho the host of the body they land on. I sometimes feel like a super bug. They've tried program after program after program. She's an auditor. She's a hooker. She's a Russian spy. She's 
a, a lover of Elrond, on and on and on and on. And I'm alive and well, and I speak out, and I have huge circles of friends. So I'm alive and well, never been healthier. Here I am, Alex. Here I am to share with you. <laughs> Do you want to talk us through a little bit about, uh, for those of you who um, aren't regular SPTV viewers, people who aren't so clued up on Scientology, what is this OSA thing we're talking about, fair game? You know, how would you describe it from your experience working in the Office of Special Affairs? You know, Alex, <laughs> two weeks after I came out, the FBI visited my CPA and they had an, an anonymous phone call that I was trafficking in children for underage sex. So I was a class 12 one day and they found out I was talking to Marty and Mike through their spy thing. And now I was a child trafficker can you believe and cast 12 for those of you watching is like that's the highest level of auditor you can get you're top of the game you are you know well respected well trained and within the church that's that's a high accolade to have achieved so one minute you're like a superstar golden kind of scientologist <laughs> and the next day you're trafficking children <laughs> yeah Right. There, there are only eight people on earth that ever reached class 12 CS. Eight people on earth since the movement began. Anyway, I don't, doesn't mean anything, class 12. So I got called frantically to ask what happened here. And Bill Green, to Bill Green told me that the FBI and a child trafficking expert were interviewing him. And he sat there, he didn't look, he looked very corporate. He is a Harvard graduate. He looks nerdy and, you know, very, and he sat there and they said, oh, this Karen of a is she, does she have any enemies? Why are they trying to pin this on her? And he said, oh, Oh, got it. She came out of the cult of Scientology two weeks ago. And he, and he said, there was a body language reaction, both of them, the child trafficker and the FBI. Once they heard that, interview was over. Thank you very much, Mr. Green. Case is closed. You see, law enforcement know the dirty tricks. When they read what, how they were set up to get Paulette Cooper and when they did the raid and they saw the programs to destroy someone who speaks out. So once they heard, oh, Church of Scientology, they didn't even call me. They closed. <laughs> they almost apologized. They said, you know, when it involves children, we have to do a checkup. We're, we're, we're really sorry we disturbed you. So within two weeks of coming out, the first fair game on me was calling the FBI anonymously to say I was trafficking in children for underage sex. <laughs> this is an example of their, their fair game often contains blood, gory, uh, you know, this Look at, look at, look at my grin, rapist, rape. They, they had him as the church spokesman for the 20 years that they're now claiming he was raping his wife. I mean, just, it's always completely tabloid, spectacular, but over the top, over the moon, which media don't believe anymore. So I had several hits. That's an example of one of them. Do you, do you, um, do you get to hear, I know so many people are writing to you. Do you hear of some fair game that 
just makes you shake your head in disbelief. Have you heard of any tales before I tell my next story? Absolutely. I mean, it's so clear that the Church of Scientology, um, although they publicize and tell the world that they're about spiritual enlightenment and helping people live a better life, you know, the, the motto is um, making the able more able, right? <laughs> However, when you look at the hard facts of the matter, Scientology is clearly motivated, at least in the public eye, um, to do two things. One is attack and discredit former members and critics. And the mm. other one is to make money, right? If you look at the PR image yes. that Scientology so vehemently defends and has this whole Office of Special Affairs set up, it's all about protecting Scientology's image. There's not much image left to protect. It's very clear the stories that are coming out with Leah Remini in the aftermath and all of these books that have been published and the SPTV phenomenon. It's so clear that the two motivators are money and attacking its critics. Well spoken. They got five million dollars out of Leah Remini. Five million. And the, they had 35 years of her. They claim they have this wondrous tech to make you a superman, superwoman. In 35 years, what was the end product they got out of Lear? They, they have so many, over 100, 200 hate sites on Lear saying how nasty she is and how vicious, blah, blah, blah. Well, don't aren't they supposed to when you take five million dollars make a better human being don't, don't, don't they actually see the ludicrousness of how their tech does not work is this is this not absolute evidence i applaud leo god i really her lawsuit doesn't just want she wants it's the abuse stopped for everyone those are her terms she's not settling for just some cash back she wants the abuse stopped what a vanguard pioneer she is taking the reins in her hand to do good for all of us oh god i think the world of leah and i think that's why scientology is so intimidated by her and why they've gone on such a vicious attack against her because she's hitting them where it hurts uh, she's not asking for compensation. Well, she she is, but she's not doing this from a money motivated point of view. It's more no, like you said, she wants the attacks to stop. She wants Scientology to change the way they're operating, the the yes. way that they deal with critics and former members. You and I know uh, very well that Scientology's policy is uh, you can't change what Elron Hubbard wrote. You cannot change the policy. So if Elrond Hubbard have a policy says to treat people in a certain way, that's how it has to get done. It is not possible for Scientology to change the way it treats and attacks and, and harasses former members. That's what Leah Remini is asking for. And yeah. that's going to cause a big problem for them. Yeah, Hubbard, the whole of keeping Scientology working these issues and policies that you're gaslighted into, solidly adopting as yours. You cannot alter Hubbard. You have to keep every word. You have to smash out of existence any altered perversion of Hubbard's word is law long after he's dead and gone, even though public relations is in a total free fall. Every day, more people come out, more people start YouTube channels, more people just <laughs> more people simply spit on the darker side of Scientology and reveal more and more. God, Aaron does a video, 20,000, 30,000 views within, <laughs> within hours. And Scientology just keeps doing the very thing that their own formula, the the normal formula is something that takes stats down, get rid of it, dump it. Something that puts stats, re replenish that, do that. So obviously this is taking stats down, 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 down. The empty morgues, they buy the buildings, they lie there empty, and they still keep doing it. 
they still keep doing what clearly doesn't operate. Anyway, Napoleon Bonaparte gave a very good sentence. He said, never alert an enemy that he's making a mistake. <laughs> Why are we alerting them? But we're alerting them because we know damn well they can't change. So it doesn't matter what alert, doesn't matter what we say, they are not going to change. And so, Alex, I'm interested in your, in your hypothetical speculation. Where will Scientology be five years from? Where will Scientology be 10 years from now? Go ahead, mm. speculate. That's a, great, that's a great question. I mean, I think truthfully, nothing is going to stop Scientology. Scientology will always be around, whether we like it or not. There are a vast wealth of uh, writings and books and publications produced by Owen Hubbard and Scientologists. And that sort of stuff doesn't just disappear and vanish off the face of the earth overnight. I mean, even if the Church of Scientology was to be shut down tomorrow and banned, outlawed in every country in the world, um, there would still be a base of very committed Scientologists of followers who believe in Scientology. And that is, is something it takes a long time to um, to recover from and to, to change someone's thinking who's currently in and currently believes in, in the word of L. Ron Hubbard. So realistically, it's going to be around for a very long time. Even if you look at the, the physical facts, you know, they have vaults around the United States where they have um, engraved Elron Hubbard's books and records onto <laughs> gold plates in titanium boxes filled with argon gas in these nuclear proof underground bunkers. They spent millions <laughs> on this project. Even if there was, you know, a mass extinction event tomorrow, Scientology scripture will be here for thousands of years, whether we like it or not. So we have to face that as a fact and we look at, okay, well, how do we start to dismantle this organization and this structure? And over time, the more ex um, the more abuses and harassment and so on that, that gets exposed, the more that becomes public knowledge, the easier it will be for people to see the truth and realize the actual effects of this organization and hopefully that will start um people thinking hmm what is this organization i'm i'm a part of i thought scientology is doing good work and there's this story here and this story here that actually it's not and so i think it's hard to put it on a five-year 10-year 20-year plan i think scientology is starting to um dwindle it has definitely shrunk a lot in the last 20 years um but it has a lot of fight still left in it you know, at the recent estimates of about $3 billion, it's probably more now. They have hundreds of millions of dollars invested in real estate around the world. They have a small number of followers that have a very large amount of wealth. And the organization has been so focused on generating income for the last 20, 30 years, at the very least. Um, they have a lot of financial buffer um, to cope with the defense and with the bills and anything else that sort of well, comes their yes. way. Yes, I, I want to tell you that just changing the law a little bit, let, let me give you an example of the mafia. The mafia were just impregnable. They just didn't matter what president came and went, they were strong. They were made multi billions in revenue annually. So Rudy Giuliani and a couple of other wizards, they changed the law. The law is called RICO. And they tweak the law if a bunch of people are plotting together. They come under a RICO statute. You can get the whole, if, if you were part. The, the thing is, they took down one family after another. All they did, all that happened was a law change. Now, it doesn't matter how many buildings they have. The buildings can be confiscated, but the government is not some little twerp lying in the corner, totally impotent and stuff. There may be local prosecutors that don't feel they want to take on a billion dollars, but the government, the Department of Justice, I won't even tell you 
how many reports have been sent? Well, I know in one year, the FBI got 300 knowledge reports, 300 of what the cult was doing after tax exemption. Once they got tax exemption, they felt they were just, they could do anything to anyone. SP Hole only came, SP Hole started in, in 2005. They got tax exemption in the 1990s. So you see, they got bolder and bolder and more and more criminal. And why I disagree with you in terms of Scientology is already online. Every part of their doc, yes, the, it might exist free, free source <laughs> to everyone. Who, you want to study all that? Help yourself, it's online. But is it really sustainable with such self-sabotage? Alex, they, they cannibalize their own. They well, this is the, where the own. difference is. Yeah, this is where the difference is. You know, there's a difference between the subject and writings and teachings of Scientology, and then there's the organization and the structure yes. of the Church of Scientology. Bingo. I definitely think the Church of Scientology won't uh, exist forever, but the teachings, the principles, the philosophy, they will last for a very, very long time. And that's the differentiation that needs to be made between yes. anyone can pick up a book and read it and decide that they want to believe in that and follow that. And, you know, that's fine, be my guest. But the organization that is the Church of Scientology is on very thin ice and it has been for a long time. And there's a lot of stuff um, in the works that will threaten its very existence. And that's why there's been such a huge push for Scientology to raise money from its members over the last mm. 20 years. Um, did you want to tell your story a little bit about um, fundraising and how if you are a big donor in Scientology, you are championed, you're seen as a hero, right? Yes, the heroes in current times are the big donors. Way back in the 60s and 70s, the auditors were the heroes. They were helping. <laughs> they got some good results. People wrote success stories. People felt happy. Producing happy people was uh, uh, something commendable. Now, the more money you give, when you walk through the corridors, the big pictures of David Miscavige with some guy with a god-awful trophy, you're a hero because you gave millions to the cult. Before we get into money, can I just, can we just finish a little more on fair game? Is that okay with you, yeah, Alex? Go for it. You wanted to tell, I wanted to tell you soon after they, the FBI yawned, oh, Church of Scientology, bomb, rubbish. Karen is trafficking in underage children for a second. Ah, yawn, yawn. So the next thing they did is they went to the city of Los Angeles and they did a report that my home was so filthy and infested with deadly rats giving typh that could give typhoid to the whole neighborhood, blah, blah, blah. And this was the time where the Daily Mail was visiting and filming me. I had media, media, media because of Alex which was just ludicrous because they were a lot of the film crews came to my home. So there was documentary evidence of my living room with all the kinky paintings. So, so they did this letter and then they followed it up with a letter to animal control saying that I was torturing my animals. Anybody who knows me even briefly knows that I am a, complete passionate animal advocate, right? And so they wrote these two letters. So I had inspectors show up from the city of LA and they said, what this report that there's such, uh, you know, we need to just look in your home. We apologize, but we've got a very alarming report on dead, roaches and infestations and so they came and they looked at my and they, and they said oh my god we apologize did, did have you got a hostile neighbor 
Neighbors do this all the time. They report their neighbor out of vengeance. I said, no, 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 no. It's the Church of Scientology. I recently got a lot of media. Da, da, da. And they said, oh, oh, okay. So this is what we're going to do. They went to the city attorney and a letter was sent out to every agency, 1935 North Serrano. Any reports on that are to be ignored. This is the Church of Scientology uh, shenanigans in revenge to Karen de la Carriere. So, and they sent me a copy. I, I, maybe I can send that to you. Put a, <laughs> it obliterated. And then animal control came. And they, they said, the, the report was I was starving my animals and sort of beating up my dog. Oh, jeez. Of course, they always have to exaggerate and go over the moon. So within two weeks of being named a child trafficker, I was reported as these this deadly inhabitant of the very posh neighborhood I live in. And again, they profusely apologized. They said, you know, we get we have to follow up on we get caught in the middle. It's usually neighbors, vengeful of neighbors that send these fake reports. We get them all the time. We look into it and it's nothing like what the report, and they were very apologetic for having to have visit me. And then this letter went out to everybody and I never ever heard from, <laughs> never had any city inspector camp. But after 40 years in the church, working like a slave, making $12 a week, doing 60 hours, 80, I, I got awards calling me million dollar girl, t-shirts, autographed e-meter, that Hubbard signed the blue e-meter that he autographed because of my high production. And the moment I came out, <laughs> this is the kind of name calling and fair game. It's dirty though. And these people that sit and plot all this, Alex, they signed a billion-year contract for religious ecclesiastical purposes. And yet they're brainwashed enough to do this to people who've served the church 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. Any comment? I mean, it's that's the way that the church operate, right? And they always have done. And... You know, I can only speak to my experience and I was in the place where I signed my seal contract. I signed one piece of paper that said I dedicate the next one billion years towards the seal organization because I genuinely believe that this is the best way and most effective way of helping people. And now I'm out. It's very clear to see that the organization isn't helping people. In fact, it's manipulating people. It's um, spending millions of tax pay uh, tax free dollars on destroying people's lives. If you are a U.S. taxpayer, you are subsidizing this behavior. Yes. The money yes. Scientology spends on sending private investigators after people, uh, the the millions of dollars it spends on calling up the police and making false reports about the state of your home or, you know, that you're molesting or um, harassing or trafficking children or whatever. These attacks are all um, from the Church of Scientology and it's being done at the taxpayer's expense. Yes. And if yes. you're a US taxpayer and you're watching yes. this and you are not outraged, you should be, yeah. <laughs> because yeah. while they are tax exempt in the US, they can get away with this sort of stuff. Mm. And that's yes. the message I want to send home is they are raising millions of dollars around the world and spending them on nefarious means. And as a US taxpayer, you are subsidizing it, whether you like it or not. Yes. Well spoken. That's a very important point. I'm glad you, glad you covered that. My taxes, are, my high taxes are being used to destroy me. <laughs> well, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. What do you think about it like that? <laughs> don't, don't underestimate how much the Department of Justice and the IRS have in terms of complaints don't but the government moves slow as a turtle it's just mm. the uh, 
the government is a huge monolithical institution. They, they don't shoot from the hip, even though in America, people do shoot from the hip and then talk to the dead body after they're dead. <laughs> we'll shoot first. This is a gun, gun happy culture. They may use guns fast, but they don't move administratively fast. They're slow, slow moving. Um, but, and, and, and you did say something very accurate. I had people show up at my gate. We, I've got pictures. I'm going to send you pictures of it. And the, and, the, and the people would say, oh, I'm a journalist of Freedom Magazine. We want to interview Karen De La Carrie. They would come to the gate. This was all intimidation to get me to shut up. And Jeffrey would usually uh, go to the gate. He sort of fireballed me. And sitting in the car would be a PI with the journalist with a gun in his holster. <laughs> they are arriving with a loaded gun. And Jeffrey did some beautiful handlings. He just would give messages to David Miscavige. And you tell David Miscavige. <laughs> um, so they went through this phase of showing up at my gate. I thought this is, I, I never show up at any org. To, I never joined those demonstrations. How dare they show up? At, of course, I have high electronic eight foot tall gates that, Work, you've got to be buzzed in to enter the property. So they weren't accessing the property. And then I had a funny little episode where a girl showed up. You know, they study it. They were studying everything. Now I'm on the back burner and I'm happy to be on the back burner. But in those days, I was fr I was doing these videos and there I didn't have 20, 30, 40 other people doing videos. I was doing video after video. And this girl came with a bird. She knew I did bird rescue. And she said, oh, I, I want to see Karen. I've got this bird. And and Jeffrey said, well, I, I don't know if Karen's available. And she said, I need to tell Karen things are different in, we've changed. She should, she should check it out. We're a, a kind of gentler <laughs> we videoed all this and within minutes we put it on youtube <laughs> so the culture is trying a different tactic to try and tell me oh come on stop stop with the, how bad we are we're, we're kinder we're better we're sweeter that was hilarious because she didn't want she she didn't want the bird rescued she wanted <laughs> And then the last, the last bit of fair game, I think we should just add on, although we got to get into money. Um, I went into litigation on real, on, on the real estate of my property. A, a big, I won. I have the house. I won. But when they found out I was in litigation, Sea Org members started showing up at opposing counsel weekly and it was so and they brought like folders of documents on me she had sex she admitted to having sex with 50 different men before the age of 25 she was promiscuous and you know a lawyer he was getting very uncomfortable who who goes to counsel about the sexual life of someone? This, this is all too bizarre for him. And he appealed to my lawyer and said, what do I do with these people showing up trying to give me smears on What do I do? What do I do? Uh, I, I wish he'd just taken out his camera and I wish I had pictures of these. So... You know this 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 thing in fair game destroy destroy the critic. They told opposing counsel, "Let us take over the case. We can destroy her and make her homeless. We'll win on the litigation. We'll win." And this lawyer got really nervous. He thought they're trying to take away my client. <laughs> They, they, he didn't get all the game and the politics of Scientology trying to destroy. He just thought, what? 
first they come with all these folders on how bad she is. Now they want to take over the they want to take over the case of my client. And, he, and also, he, he, let's not forget, most lawyers, even if they're on the opposing counsel, they don't want to destroy your life, right? They, yes, they, they want exactly. to come to a resolution, right? No exactly. lawyer wants to go to court. The goal exactly. is always to try and litigate, to try and figure the solution out, you know, and, and make sure that the law is upheld in a fair and equal manner. And sometimes that to some people, that's to some people's detriment and, and sometimes not. But no lawyer even if they're against you is going to want to destroy your life and make you homeless so that lawyer must have been like what no i don't yeah you might win the litigation but i don't want to destroy her life i just want to win this case <laughs> alex you are so perfect sometimes in how you 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 absolutely get it and you put it all all the right words i could not have said it better myself but i wanted to show the fair game went to the point where they wanted to take over a civil lawsuit and use their huge, all their church lawyers being paid by tax exempt money to destroy me, to make me homeless because I was making videos and doing media interviews. That's, that's, that was like the, and I told the lawyer, I wanted the lawyer to go to Tony Ortega's blog because I thought, what a, you know, and and Tony was happy to have him, and I don't know. The, the, he got into some other the, but we, we never he, he never made it to Tony Ortega's. But but they wanted to, to destroy me and use church funded lawyers to take over a lawsuit to destroy me and make me home. So this is this is the kind of fair game I've put up with through the through the last. And, uh, I've and been something, mm -hmm. sorry, go on. Go on, no, no, you go. I was going to say, I think something that a lot of people don't realize, even when you're a Scientologist and you're donating money to the church, you think it's going towards expansion. You think it's going towards social betterment programs to help get people off drugs or rehabilitate um, people in jail and offenders or promoting human rights. Those are the social betterment program front groups that Scientology use. And that's what you think your money is going towards when you donate to the church. When you donate for a service for auditing, you think that money's going towards the expansion and growth of Scientology. No Scientologist will sit there and uh, genuinely think that the money they're donating is going towards fighting you in court or trying to take over a legal case against an SP that has nothing to do with Scientology in the first place. That's how they're spending their money. And that's not what Scientologists think their money is being spent on. So firstly, you have everybody in the US who is paying taxes subsidizing this behavior, whether you like it or not. Secondly, you have Scientologists donating, thinking it's being used for something when in fact it's being used for something else. And then you have what the church is actually using this money to do, which is harass and attack critics and former members. This doesn't sound like the sort of behavior one would expect from, you know, a Christian church or um, a Muslim center or a Jewish group. Right. Like this is not religious activity at all. It is the activity of a money making scam. Alex, brilliant beautifully spoken you summarized it all in one paragraph you're really really good alex you you're cerebral you've got a good analytical mind that thinks in logical sequences well done alex thank you it's I'm because i uh, i did scientology auditing and i've got rid of my reactive mind so i'm thinking analytically <laughs> that's why Could, i wouldn't be here without scientology guys <laughs> <laughs> well it's it's uh, it's a bitter lesson i put 40 years of my life into this. 40 years. Ooh. 40 years of my life. It's a Shakespearean tragedy. After 40 years of my life, they took away my son in a kind of kidnap, divorced him of me, never let, and he died at 27 years old after I sacrificed 40 years contributing to them. What a, what a, what a bittersweet, absolute wake up call. However, I rejoice in the fact that I have completely 
no more gurus for me, no matter what life. I do believe in reincarnation, That, but I believed in reincarnation long before I joined the church. In fact, I joined Scientology partially because, you know, I wanted something that validated reincarnation, that, that, that I had certainty of. So I'm happy that this lifetime was a learned, hard-learned lesson. Now, back to the money, the money aspect. You know, they had a technique, Alex, of letting four Sea Org members. It's quite intimidating when four members in full fruit salad campaign bars and lanyards and Sea Org caps with the laurel leaves arrive at your home. And they would arrive late at night. And they had a target to not leave without a significant sum of money. They would keep the person up till 3 a.m., 4 a.m. They would not leave till they siphoned out 30 million, 40 million. You take out a trust deed on your home. You empty out the college savings accounts for your kids. You would, they would just be so trained to vampire with suction out the blood and with long teeth and only leave when they had the money they could get out of you. This is, so when you say, oh, Scientology may be around, you're right. The Church of Scientology is not sustainable. This conduct is hideous. What they didn't tell the poor hapless victim is that they have a couple of billion. <laughs> they were taking the last gold out of the teeth of the poor victim without disclosing how much money they actually had in Sea Org Reserves. Sea Org Reserves was a billionaire, and this poor hapless victim was contributing to the war chest by giving up his life's work and going into debt in the future, right? The amount of money extraction is... I, I wanted to tell you the little anecdote of this lady who lives down the road from me, her husband died. While the body was still cold in the morgue, Sea Org descended on her. She owned a home, which was, I think you call it freehold, when there's no more debt owed on it, you don't pay a monthly mortgage. By the time they left, she was mortgaged to the hilt, at 78 years old, she had to go back to work just to pay a mortgage to live in a house. They had mortgaged the house. They took away the life insurance of the the life insurance of her dead husband. He's still his body. He hasn't been buried. There hasn't been a funeral ceremony. They took his pension. They took anyway. They walked away with a vast amount. See. We started wondering, do they really want to sell $20 com courses? Do they really want to sell an intro course for $100? They want to move in and get $5 million in one fell swoop. And the reason I mentioned this lady, I can even send you a couple of pictures of her. When I walked to the exams in, I think I exited in 1990. No. I exited the Sea Org in 1990. In 2010, outside the examiner's office, I told you the heroes and the, the heroes are those that have given millions. There's this picture of her as a multi million dollar donor. And then as I looked up the web, and she, she was the hero of the week or flavor of the month because. While her husband's dead body lay in the morgue, the cult was able to get millions out of her. I don't know if it's four million, five million, whatever. Any comment? I mean, it doesn't surprise me. This is the sort of activity we see around the world. Um, this is what Scientology does. And this is why money is such a big motivator for Scientology. You know, they suck you in with 
$50, $100 courses. Hey, come and learn about yourself, learn how to communicate, you know, learn how to raise children or whatever it is that they get you in on. They find your ruin. Once they found your ruin, that's the thing that you want to change most about your life. Then they use that and they hang that above your head as, as a blackmail power. And when you're going through a traumatic experience, losing your husband, what most churches would do is be there to offer a helping hand and some support. We're really sorry to hear what you're going through. How can we help you? How can we assist you? You know, if you need some spiritual counseling, come and see the priest or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Church of Scientology's support for a <laughs> parishioner in need is to show up and yeah. ask for money and get her mm -hmm. to remortgage her house. Yes. They hadn't even taken her in session. This was the night he had died in the morning and the vampires descended on her to get her net worth relentlessly. But that's just one story of many. You know, the cult had become so dishonest and American Express is one credit card that watches computer trends. So before we get into this, I think we need to give a little bit of context, right? We're talking here about the chase wave, right? The chase no, wave no. is a later iteration of yeah. what happened with American Express. Yes, so for correct. those of you watching yes. who um, have heard about the chase wave, it's a credit card scam fraud that Scientology engaged in fairly recently, 2013, 2014 to about 2017, 18, around those sorts of years. Um, we can talk about that in a moment, but you have to understand this was not a standalone one-time incident. When Chase Bank blocked their pay payments to Scientology organizations, if you hold a Chase Bank card, you can't use it to pay for services at a Church of Scientology. Um, before that even happened, you haven't been able to use an American Express at a Church of Scientology for even longer. Let's talk about that. Why? What happened? I do want you to cover the chase wave. We can't talk about it enough. It's not good enough that it's just wonderful that Tony Ortega covered it and so on in this daily blog. But I do want you to give a summary of that. It's vital. We have to. Do. So American Express did an analysis and found out that Thursday before two o'clock, there were huge sums put on. That's bad enough. But some of these were like $40,000, which was in those days membership to the IAS. Then it went up to 50000 I believe it's 60000 It's gone up. But in those days, it was $40,000. And church regs actually coached people, go ahead and charge it. Then you can just declare bankruptcy. You don't have to pay it. Let American Express swallow it. They're rich enough. When American Express found out the scam, Church of Scientology, and then they then made American Express card invalid. And this was quite a hit for the for the flag service org, where a lot of people use using credit cards and you run out of hours and Amex was no longer honored. Amex was blocked. Los Angeles Day Celebrity Center in Los Angeles, American Express made them persona non grata. How many religions do you know in the world that would be outed as crooks by Chase and American Express? Two huge credit card companies both found out about cult criminality. Amazing. Eventually, after many, many years and pleaded this and that, I believe Amex did give them, I'm not sure all orgs, but they got some privileges back in some orgs. But can you summarize the chase wave? That's such a vital story to tell. Go ahead, Alex. The chase wave is, is a similar sort of scam. It was where the bank systems um weren't as instant as they are now so mm -hmm. if you um were able to take out a credit card or a loan for let's say a thousand pounds or a thousand dollars 
um, just, you know, for the sake of the conversation. Um, when you make that application to the bank, it takes some time for that to process and go through on the system. So Scientology were encouraging its members to um, to make an application to one bank and then before the system catches up, make another application with another bank and do this multiple times so that this person ends up with 10 or $15,000 when they should have only had $1,000 um dollars of, of debt available to them now i used very small numbers but in real terms actually we're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt for these people um that was then used to pay for scientology services in advance there were also cases of for example um like you say declaring bankruptcy so that uh you that they didn't have to pay that money back and there is also um reports of elderly people perhaps in care homes um having credit cards and loans taken out in their name knowing that they didn't have much long uh, much life left in them so that when the person passed away that debt is just swallowed up by the taxpayer and and written off and that money had already been spent at the church of scientology there are a number of different accounts of things like this that happened. And it was all to do with, it's called the chase wave because um, a large number of these um, cases were um, linked to Chase Bank. And the story goes, apparently David Miscavige found out about it because he had no idea apparently, and then went and had a meeting with someone very senior and high up at the Chase Bank and said, hey, look, I found out that People in my organization have been doing this. It was unauthorized. I've sacked them all. They're not in financial positions anymore. We're sorry. And it won't look very good for you either when it comes out in the press that you didn't catch on because this is how much money we've made from this. So they came to some sort of gentleman's agreement uh, to just kind of call it quits and agree that Chase Bank cannot be used um to to make purchases at church scientology anymore now these are all allegations of course i don't have any proof that that meeting happened i don't have any evidence that any of this has happened but there is evidence out there that these things did occur and the facts of the matter is that chase bank blocked payments to church of scientology so when you piece them together you can you can mm. put this full picture together and this is something that happened globally if you yeah. look at the uk revenue of the church of scientology um, over the same period of time, the amount of money the church is bringing in every year, um, I think it, it more than doubled. I believe it was actually mm. a five times increase in their mm. revenue year on year. Mm. The money on account, which means money people have prepaid in advance for services, went up and up and up and up. And then it stayed at that level. This fraud clearly mm. stopped because mm. that money on account hasn't been spent. They haven't been delivering the services that they uh, have been paid for in advance. The church has since spent that money. And if mm. someone was, if everyone was to request their money back for these prepaid undelivered services, it would bankrupt the church. They don't have enough cash in the bank to pay for these services. Um, mm. And again, the facts, that's the facts of the matter. You can see it in the accounts. Mm. Very good. Uh, like. To, to simplify it in a little anecdote, a guy would be called up, let's say he, he's in his 70s, he's in Hawaii, and they call him up and say, oh, you know, in the 1960s, you did, a, you did we, we looked up your account and you've got spare auditing hours that you never used. And he said, I do? They said, use up your hours. We're going to send you an airline ticket and fly you out from Hawaii, be our guest. Use up hours that you've never used up on your account. This was all part of the fairy tale story. So the guy would fly out from, and now the vultures were gonna get 70,000, average for $70,000 on these old elder abuse type cases or for the, the cult wanted their blood and would sell them, first of all, I think the bunker, the underground bunker had pictures. They had to buy a full library. They would just enforce a full library, put it on the credit card, a full, every, the basics and all the tapes and the, the 
everything. And $70,000 was, was the average on the chain of, of what elders taking out multi the whole scam was this. Now, you know, they got so criminal that in Cincinnati org, the staff were forced to do the same thing, take out multiple credit cards. And the revenue went to public to buy counseling, which was counted in the stats. It looked like Cincinnati was booming. Oh, what are they doing? Look at this. Now, it was valid cash, but it was on credit cards of staff who staff can't afford. So eventually all the staff, uh, the staff couldn't pay the minimums and the whole thing blew up to high heaven. It really did blow up. And then a mission came and removed this. Scientology always points the finger. Who's who's the who? <laughs> they took the money. They, with all their data series, investigative tech, and their OSERs and their DSAs, no one knew that all this criminality was going on. So they made Jeannie Sonnenberg the sitting duck. She was the who, blah, 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 card swallow. Many hands were in the pie. But this business of scamming people with credit card payments even went to the point where staff were forced to take out multiple credit cards, not for themselves, not for their owner, but for public just to give a stat push. One of Scientology's flaws, fatal flaws, is how much stat push occurs. Thursday, to, you're as good as last week's Thursday to Thursday stats. And the stat push makes people go very illegal. Alex? Yeah. I can attest to that. I, having worked on staff at the Church of Scientology in London, um, it's very clear that statistics are super important for Scientologists. You know, your performance and well-being is judged on your weekly statistic. Mm -hmm. Every staff member in the Church of Scientology has at least one stat that they're, um, you know, responsible for. For me, as director of public book sales, my stat was NBS raw, which is number of books sold to raw public. That means non-Scientologists. How many new people can we bring in? If my stat wasn't at least one higher than it was last week, I'm in trouble. And when I say I'm in trouble, not just someone sits down and says, Alex, you need to improve your performance like a normal job. It's no, you have to do lower conditions. You have to mm. confess to what you've done wrong against the church. You have to find a reason why you haven't done a good enough job. You might be labeled a potential trouble source. You're related or associated with a suppressive person. You have overts and withholds, which is, you know, you have to write up your, you have to confess to your wrongdoings against the church. The treatment of people who don't deliver on their stats is horrific. And it happens at every single level of the Scientology organization, not just in LA to the Sea Org, not just in Florida. It's a global phenomenon. So you are under immense pressure that you put on yourself every week because it's not like the church sit you down and, you know, drill it into you. Like you just want to avoid that treatment because you know the consequences if you don't uh, perform or your stats aren't up each week. So you put the pressure on yourself and because of that pressure, you then start doing stupid and crazy things. Like I remember um, one week having um, the, the Dianetics book was, I think, 13 pounds off the top of my head. But we had these little booklets that were from the Scientology handbook. They were, they were called VM booklets, volunteer ministers. That was just basically like a little flyer leaflet type thing that talked about one subject like communication or something. 
Um, and they were only one or two pounds. So if it got to a Wednesday night, the day before Thursday, which is when the stats are counted, and I, I was five books sold lower than I was last week, instead of trying to find five people to sell Dianetics, I would find one person and sell them five VM books because that is cheaper, it's less money, <laughs> but I get five books sold. Right. So these are the sorts of tricks that you kind of learn when you're a Scientologist yeah. to try and get your stats up. This is the pressure. And in the Sea Org particularly, and for, um, you know, higher up organizations, the pressure put on the Sea Org is is even more intense because um, if you have committed your life to Scientology, you're given accommodation, you're given food and all of this sort of stuff in return for your service. So the threat of your accommodation being taken away from you is very much real. You know, mm. if you don't perform, then you'll be punished. You get taken away the right to eat proper food. You just get to eat the scraps, you know, yes. the leftovers from everybody yes. else. So people stay up all night and put immense pressure on themselves to yeah. really generate these stats. And that has in the past led to illegal activity. It's management by punishment. It's not management by acknowledgement of what what you are doing, but hey, why don't you do better than that? Cracking a whip on statistics. You see, none of this when we when we review some of them, it's not sustainable. It just isn't. Did you know the racket of how they um, they do all this fundraising for a local org? And they hit on the locals to fund a new ideal org. And the locals are conned. They think, oh, that's that's interesting. Our poor staff are hardly getting paid, but if they own the property, they'll get paid. Uh, well, let's chip in here. And then what happens? The property belongs to the Church of Scientology International in, in the landlord office and is rented back right off the top of the revenue made that week before staff are paid. Int management is paid for leasing back the property that all the locals were gulled into believing that they had bought and would, that the locals would own their own org. They scammed them. They cannibalized. It's 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 a con even within the cult. The big fish cons and extracts. Look at all the outer org students who have to do slave labor to pay for their birthing and food. That's another con. But but the cult is conning the outer org. I'm trying to show you how they even, the conning doesn't go just outbound to poor suckers out there. <laughs> they cannibalize themselves. There's so much self-destruction, self-sabotage, sabotage. Alex, I want to tell you that we haven't even, I've got some great anecdotes on money fraud and stuff. Can we do a part two on this? We had planned, we've hit the one hour mark and we planned that one hour is as much as people will invest in a show. Can we, uh, can you invite me back to do part two of this? Yeah, absolutely. And it's been fascinating to talk with you, Karen, and start delving down this rabbit hole that is the Scientology mm -hmm. structure, the finance, the pressure, um, and I'm looking forward to hearing more about that. I want to talk to you about your recovery process as well. Um, one thing I'm working on at the moment is setting up um, Cause Over Life, which is going to be a non-profit organization to help people recover from Scientology. Um, it's not the Aftermath Foundation. That very much helps people leave and escape Scientology. And the Cause Over Life is going to be a separate organization that very much helps people in their recovery process, whether it be mental health support or education, a resource hub online that's free to access. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to talk to you about your recovery process as well in a part two, if you'd be open to that. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. But but there are more, more to tell on money. Money is a universe. I want to do that plus the, as you say, the recovery thing.
Fantastic. Karen de la Carriere, thank you so much. It was lovely to hang with you, Alex. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>